Hello Brigandine fans, this is Double 77 Trigger here, and you are watching Norgard. Um, I started a file of uh, playing Norgard, playing Brigandine Grand Edition. I finally found this, and uh, yeah, I'm going to bring it to you, and you're going to be able to see it. Now, there's a lot of this that uh, you probably can't understand because a lot of it's Japanese. I believe it's Japanese, if it's something else, I'm totally wrong. Go ahead and correct me, correct me on it. But, um, yeah, uh, this is uh, uh, decent gameplay. Uh, so far, what I'm going to try to do, you know, basically right off the start, is I'm going to try to show you every single battle. Um, unlike Escalio, I didn't show the exact original battles because I got kind of uh, you know, really sucked into it and I just kind of started playing it right away and I saved it. And, just kind of forgot to uh, record some of it, but um, these, these are the, going to be the first battles here. Um, this is the very first battle that I'm going to do, and I'm probably sure you're wondering, why the heck are you attacking Lydney right off the bat? Why are you attacking it? And um, let me explain. Now, this battle um, in, in Lydney that I've attacked from, I've pretty much done this since the beginning of the game. Now, I don't know where it started exactly, but uh, ever since I played as Norgard, um, hey, you know, from the very beginning of the game, that little intro where uh, Vineart says, uh, go and attack, uh, you know, go, you know, take over Jukes and stuff like that. I just kind of went through that really quickly in the beginning, and I didn't really listen to it so much, so I kept thinking that Vineard wanted me to attack Lindy right away, too. And, uh, since the very beginning, I just went out and I attacked Lindy. It was the hardest battle for me. I think it is probably one of the hardest battles to do at the very beginning of the game uh, because of uh, just the, the sheer difficulty of it. I mean, you're, you're coming in there with, um, you know, I don't know, I do have a good amount of air creatures, you know, it's, um, it's not fair, I do have a, a lot of air creatures, so I do have a good, um, assault, but still, being the first battle of the game, and, uh, you know, coming up against Kador, you know, Ivan, typically, uh, Malay, or whoever else they have there, but, um, you know, I'm just talking about Malay and Kador. Uh, it's still a very difficult battle. And uh, in this one, I'm not going to claim that, oh, you know, I you know, haven't lost any monsters or whatever. This one I will lose monsters, but this one, um, uh, pretty much I go into it to try to take over this position because this castle is just sublime to keep in order to uh, gain extra mana, you know, extra, um, you know, basic extra mana for your uh, army overall. And I can put um, lesser armies here in time that aren't that good, but are good enough to hold this place because um, if they come to attack me, which they probably will, I can move them down to the bridge and um, kind of stop them there like uh, what the 300 uh, uh, Spartans did to the Persian army. Uh, pretty much I can just stop them in their tracks as long as they don't have too many air or water creatures. I'll be able to stop them with almost any army. So I can put in a, um, a lesser army here that's not quite as good to just block it and barricade it. It's a perfect defense, um, you know, either way from the north or the south. This is one of the best places to, um, to hold, honestly. So typically also what I found out is if I don't attack it right away, they may get more monsters, uh, better knights to put here and it does get harder. Um, it's already hard enough as it is, but it does get harder. So uh, playing on the Grand Edition is kind of nice because I'm, typically I'm used to watching the animations. And the animations, uh, from what I've been seeing, you know, in comparison to this uh, Grand Edition, they do kind of hold up some of the strategy. I do get kind of caught up in the animations. Um, so this is kind of nice. But uh, I do also miss the animations. I have just been so used to it, which is kind of the way it goes. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a, a good change of pace. Um, I can play the multiplayer, and I will probably try that soon. I might try that with a friend and see how well I do against him, because uh, 
my friend who plays this is pretty darn good too. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to play, you know, with and against him, but um, I don't know. He might kick my butt. But uh, we'll see if, uh, if he actually wants to play this and uh, he can sort of you know, get through um, trying to understand some of the Japanese and, uh, you know, maybe I can get some of that on uh, footage. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to show all the videos that it takes uh, for uh, Norgard to go through in Grand Edition. Even the last uh, video, I guess, uh, I'm going to have to play against Bullnoil and friends. Stuff out to wipe his butt. Uh, well, kick his butt. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to, you know, wipe the floor with uh, bull oil and I'll wipe the floor with uh, whatever else comes my way. I'll just completely destroy them. Uh, for the first, probably, oh, I don't know, maybe three, five battles, I probably will lose some monsters. So, you know, those of you that are watching this that are very high on, um, not losing any single monster, uh, you know, I really, I honestly, I do that more for my like, personal gameplay, but for a YouTube video like this, I think what I'm going to try to do is just, you know, get through the game, you know, as quickly as possible so that I'm not, uh, you know, wasting your time having you watch an hour-long video, but, uh, you know, if that's, if that's what you want to see, you know, you can let me know, um, I'll definitely, uh, have more videos that are definitely longer. Um, not really sure how long this took me. I just played the the battle a little while ago, and um, you know it was a decent one. I've been trying to uh, get this recording device. I've been trying to do working. So this is honestly the fifth battle I've done on here, and just the other ones they just didn't record so well. So uh, this is the fifth battle. Uh, I had a few where I did flawless, you know, and I had a few where I did pretty bad. So, uh, this battle, um, on Grand Edition, I have to say, is almost slightly easier than the normal version. And I know it sounds strange to say that because Gondor has, uh, healing abilities in here where he does not have it in, um, the basic version. But for some reason or another, it just seems a little easier. Maybe it's because I have the animations off. I'm not sure. Maybe it's because Godor doesn't have Geno points. I think Geno points are, um, you know, kind of racks up his uh, his his offense, his personality. Um, I don't know. Um, I did notice that there are a few extra attacks that my knights can do. Uh, you know, besides just the normal attack, it's like some kind of special attack that can do something extra. Uh, <laughs> not totally sure, but uh, I'm just gonna do a rough playthrough and just, you know, start playing it like this. Um, I did notice that the lizard men uh, can sometimes block with their shield and take very, very little damage. And that's pretty darn awesome. Um, in comparison to the original uh, Brigadine, I'd say that the Lizard Guards do trump the Gym Dudes, but also because they have five more mana points than the original um, Brigadine goes, they have five more mana cost points. So I can understand why, you know, they're just a little bit better. Plus, I guess when you get to level 30, they can attack twice in a row. Um, you know, I guess that's just the way it goes. Uh, I'll have to see. Um, but I, I think I did see it on a previous video of someone else's. Um, so in here, you've probably noticed that, you know, I've stoned uh, Malay and stuff like that. And some people are, would say, oh, that's luck. <laughs> well, no, not really. Not with rocks. It's not luck. Um, it's just a percent uh, that happens. It's like if you were gambling and you were given a 60% chance of having a hit, well, you know, after you know, a few turns, it probably will hit. So, you know, you don't need to worry too much about it. Uh, typically, the rocks, some rocks may stone a ton in the other version, the original Brigadine version, and some rocks may stone hardly next to none, hardly at all. But on the average, a rock is going to stone 
And, and uh, I know it's probably going to be different for everybody, but on rock, on average, it seems to me, as much as I play this game, we'll stone about 60% of the time. And uh, that's quite a lot. That's more than 50%. Um, but, um, you know, with just the average rock, it seems like it will stone that many times. And so, you know, it doesn't surprise me when they stone. It's just kind of a normal thing. You know, that's part of their ability. You know, it can come out. I noticed with um, some other things, like, um, I don't know, maybe a demon's venom, that it will work maybe 40% of the time, or 30% of the time. It won't work quite as much as maybe a lizard breath's poison, you know, breath. All right, sorry, sorry, <laughs> lizard hands poison breath. It won't work quite as much as that because, well, the poison breath is a poison breath, so it should, in essence, poison almost all the time. The poison breath kind of has a 80 to 90 percent chance of uh, actually working, um, you know, from playing it. You know, just the feel of the game and just seeing how many times it actually does work. The poison breath doesn't work a lot. Uh, Venom doesn't quite work as much. I'd say maybe a scorpion's attack works about 50% of the time, and a death needle's attack works maybe about 80% of the time. 80 to 90% of the time, it'll Venom the creature. So, you know, in, in regards to this stoning ability, um, you really don't have to, you know, think it's luck. That's part of its ability, and it does it quite a lot. You know, I know people are annoyed by rocks, and they are annoying as hell when they're not on your team, but when you put them on your team, it's pretty darn good. Uh, especially when they do actually stone the enemy. And uh, what you are watching here is this gameplay of Grand Edition on hard mode. I'm doing it on hard mode again because I've pretty much just played on hard since, um, you know, since the second time I played the game. Uh, the first time I played the game, I got really cocky, and I thought, you know, I'm playing on hard mode, and uh, I like this guy, Drist. He's pretty cool. He's got the sickle. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it with Drist. And I just got wiped out the first time I played the game, uh, you know, in 98. And after that, I thought, you know, I'm going to play as someone else. I can't remember exactly who I played as. Right after that, it might have been Norgard. Um, it might have been uh, Caridon. I can't remember off the top, but I play as them, I play on normal, uh, I got kind of into the game, uh, I figured out, you know, what to do, I got pretty far, and then, uh, you know, I stopped it, and I tried a new character, and I went through all the scenarios, and I went through all the modes, you know, what I could do, and this and that, and, um, you know, did the best I could. And so, so many years later, I kind of know how to play it, so I'm playing on hard. Um, you know, this is still a bit new to me because some of the characters get some extra attacks. And, um, you know, obviously, in this video right here, in particular, I completely forgot about the second attack, <laughs> which is actually stronger than the normal one, I believe. Um, but um, I'm not sure it has a higher miss rate, so. I don't know, maybe I didn't miss out on anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, here I decided to put this um, this white dragon up here so I can shoot uh, my birth attack downward. I kept the giant up on the top in hopes that they would send the hydra up there, in which case they did, which is actually very good because he's lower than my giant is, and uh, hopefully the giants will actually get a few hits on him. Um, you know, I thought, well, I kind of want to get closer here with, uh, you know, I, I think it's Gwingulin. Um But, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of deciding on stuff. Yeah, it's Gwingulin right there. Uh, might do a heal on the rock because he's an important part of the game. I want to try to keep him alive. Um, just, I mean, especially with, uh, with this kind of crew. It, to me, this feels sort of like an oddball crew, you know, mostly, um, you know, attackers, but they're sort of defensive at the same time, because Yvonne, Gwingulin, yeah, they're attackers, but they can heal, so they're kind of defensive as well. Palmites is an attacker too, so it's kind of a mixed attacking assault crew. Um, and, um, 
um, you know, that's that's kind of how I started the game up. Very start of the game, I just, I don't know, I just completely thought that I was supposed to come down and attack Lydia right away, and I always thought at the beginning that if I attacked Lydia right away, I would get uh, Shulius, and I know I'm probably not saying right, and I would get um, Luinto. And if I attacked again, I'd get more Holt, so I kept thinking, oh, if I can attack as much as possible, I'm going to get all three of these three guys. And I find out later that's not totally the case. Um, but in any sense, um, that's what I did at the beginning, and it's just been a habit, and that's what I've been doing ever since. So, um, yeah, in the first uh, three battles, three to five, not typically for the yeah, about three to five battles. I do lose some monsters. Uh, that's kind of the the way war starts. I get uh, you know very aggressive, and plus you know trying to make a video. I don't want to make it too too long. You know where um, you know it's just it's way too long because uh, there's only so much that a person can sit there watching the strategy, especially if uh, you know you're taking your time trying to figure things out. But um, you know with this, I wanted to. Um, <laughs> You know, get some good stuff on here. Uh, this was a decent game. Um, you know, I did get a few decent uh, strategic moves, strategic attacks here. Wanted to kill at least a Hydra. I really wanted to kill the Lord Vampire, but he just was not in a position to, you know, kill off completely. Um, yeah, basically what I love to do, what, what I really try to do in this battle here, as I try to move down just a little bit to the right while moving down in the water. Typically, if you want to take it at a very slow, steady pace, that works out really well. You want to move down with a few of your um, you know, leaders in the water. The Palmetis does not need to be in the water area to move down. Um, you know, he, he doesn't need to be there. Uh, that second thought here probably should have shot that uh, at flame breath at the waiver. I was just kind of hoping that, uh, you know, not to get counterattacked here, but, um, in any case, I wanted, you know, what you really want is to get Palm Mighty's down in the fight, and, uh, yeah, he's getting lower and stuff, what you want to try to do is move your knights, move your bond, go wingling through the water waves, you know, try to move him down through the water, you know, push him down to the bridge a little bit, but then throw him into the water and have him walk down the water waves, and then have him heal up whoever they need to heal up. Uh, trying to get down that bridge all in one single file is a pain in the butt, and it doesn't work that great. So, um, yeah, here, look at this. I, I think I confused him, and, uh, I, you know, like, is that confusion? I have no idea. I can't read Japanese. I have no idea what's going on. So, somehow I just got the 14 hit points. I don't know what's going on with that. I guess I could have left the Hydra confused. Um, probably should have done that. Uh, I was kind of hoping that my Griffin would be able to uh, live through the turn. Uh, I was doing it so fast, I wasn't really watching the turn ratios. Um, you know, hoping that he'd get up at you know, 100 hit points that might help out. But um, I think they just decided to get some kill shots before they go. And uh, they're, they're playing it pretty smart for getting some kill shots. Um, it doesn't bother me too much because down here I'm probably going to be ordering some Hydras. So I need to get some stuff out of the way to order some Hydras because I'm going to be using this castle as defense a little while. And, um, you know, that's fine. They kill off a few of my, uh, my Griffins. I'm just going to order Hydras. And that's going to make it even more difficult for them to assault me because they're going to have to come up the waterway and fight my Hydras. So, it's perfect. I love it. Um, so yeah, I lost a few monsters here. It's fine and all, but I got to beat Kador, kicked him out of here, and that's great. So uh, in any case, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. This double sense of trigger here, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.